Even though China has been called the world's factory, making clothing, shoes, electronics, and furniture, the country's ability to manufacture highly industrialized products, such as advanced semiconductors and precision instruments, is limited. Made in China sadly has become a brand associated with low quality, poor craftsmanship, intellectual property theft, and slave labor. However, China wasn't like this before the Communist Party took power. You may be surprised to find out about China's manufacturing capability before communism. Once upon a time, the Middle Kingdom helped build wartime vessels for the United States. Hi everyone, I'm Lei. Welcome to Lei's Real Talk. In today's geopolitics, it's hard to believe that the United States would ask China to build its warships. Aside from quality issues, the biggest problem is the lack of trust. But not just Americans, and it doesn't have to be warships. If you ask the Chinese, even they don't want to buy things made in China, whether it's food or cars. But the CCP has successfully brainwashed people, Chinese and Westerners alike, to believe that the regime has lifted China out of poverty and turned it into a manufacturing powerhouse. Let's first look at how a major accomplishment in manufacturing claimed by the CCP was a disaster. In November 1958, mainland China celebrated the launch of its first 10,000-ton vessel, Progressive. The ship, copied from a Soviet design, was hailed as a great achievement of the Mao era. It was said to have been built in 58 days, surpassing Japan, the world's fastest ship builder. China's Postal Service issued a commemorative stamp featuring the Progressive. Although the ship was made in less than two months, it took almost five years before making its maiden voyage, and the ship didn't travel far before it sank after just one day, causing an international crisis. The Progressive set sail on April 30, 1963, from the port of Qingdao, heading for Nagoya, Japan, with 13,000 tons of corn and minerals. However, the next day, on May 1st, the Progressive sank 150 nautical miles east of Chongming Island outside Shanghai. Before sinking, the captain sent a telegram. The ship was hit and is damaged badly. Prior to sailing, authorities conducted a background check on the entire crew and replaced half of it with individuals whom the regime deemed politically reliable, including the captain and the second officer, who, according to reports released decades later, were not very experienced. To ensure quote-unquote safety and in a communist-style secrecy, the captain didn't tell the crew their destination. When the ship sank, 59 crew members were rescued by a Japanese fishing boat. The Chinese told the Japanese that a torpedo from a submarine had hit their ship. Japanese media immediately broke the news, saying that China's first domestic-made 10,000-ton cargo ship sank on its way to Japan after being hit by three torpedoes. It caused a shockwave around the world. The United States, Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan declared they had nothing to do with the incident. It took the Chinese government one month to announce that the boat was not hit by torpedoes, but sank after hitting rocks. We don't know whether the ship sank due to technical failure or human error, or maybe both. But the event that was supposed to celebrate China's manufacturing capability ended up in disaster and shame. It took the CCP another four years to send its 10,000-ton ship on a successful maiden voyage in 1967. In actuality, the CCP had no reason at all to celebrate any so-called success, because the incident only proved the regression communism brought to China's manufacturing. The CCP didn't produce the first large Chinese ship. China was able to manufacture 10,000-plus-ton jumbo freight liners as early as the 1920s, and even made wartime vessels for the United States government. China's industrial manufacturing capability was established before the CCP took power. China produced its large warship in 1906 with 3,074 tons of displacement and 3,000 horsepower. China built its first diesel engine in 1913 and its first operational aircraft in 1919. 
Chinese builders accepted orders for 25 ships from Europe and the United States as early as 1918. The largest contract was signed on July 25, 1918, between China's ambassador to the United States, Wellington Ku, on behalf of Jiangnan Shipyard and a representative from the United States government for four carriers with a displacement of 14,750 tons, powered by three-cylinder steam engines with 3,670 horsepower. The Americans provided the design and the materials, and the Chinese agreed to complete the work within six months. In November that year, World War I ended. The United States government requested to change the design from wartime transport vessels to commercial cargo ships. Jiangnan Shipyard thus redesigned the ships. In his book, The Secret of China's First 10,000-Ton Ships, Chinese ship design expert Hu Keyi disclosed that the Chinese redesigned drawings are kept in the Technical Archives of China Shipping Building Industry Corporation. The 3,700 horsepower triple expansion steam engines used in the vessels were designed and manufactured by Jiangnan Shipyard. When the ships were tested at the time of delivery, their speed measured at 12.09 knots, 1.59 knots faster than the speed required by the contract. This won praises from the Americans. On June 3, 1920, the first 10,000-ton ocean liner, the Mandarin, was launched. The U.S. ambassador to China, Charles Richard Crane, and the former head of Chinese Navy, Liu Guanxiong, attended the launching ceremony. The Chinese and foreign media widely reported the event, calling the ships the largest ever built in the Far East outside Japan and that China's industrialization has entered a new era. Three months later, the second ship, the Celestial, was launched, followed by the Oriental and the Cathay in the following year. All four vessels sailed for the United States in 1921. The U.S. official supervising warship construction reported that the vessels are solid and well-equipped. The U.S. Department of Transportation accepted the project with great satisfaction. The four Chinese-made vessels were used during World War II by the American government. The Americans changed the engines from coal-fired steam power to oil-powered engines. According to author Hu Keyi, the Celestial was later renamed to the Arkansas and was hit by German torpedoes during World War II and sank in the Caribbean Sea. The other three vessels served during the war as freight cargo. The success of the project helped Jiangnan Shipyard obtain an international reputation. By 1936, Jiangnan built the Chinese Navy's flagship cruiser, Pinghai Hao, which was 110 meters long, with 7,427 horsepower and a speed of 25 knots. Equipped with anti-aircraft guns and torpedo launchers, the ship played an essential role in September 1937 in holding the waterway in Jiangying and stopping the Japanese invasion. Today, it's hard to imagine the U.S. government asking a state-owned Chinese shipyard to manufacture its wartime vessels. The CCP hasn't made China more technologically competitive. Even if it does achieve some technological advantage, its competitiveness comes at a price to the world. Just look at its space program and the reckless debris and space junk its satellites and rockets generate. Without the CCP, China will get along harmoniously with the rest of the world, and only then will Made in China have the branding it deserves. This is part one of the series. I'm planning more videos about China and the Chinese people before the CCP. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.